Welcome to section 15.5. In this video, we are going to look at one application of double integrals, which is surface area. So rather than going through the derivation, I'm just going to tell you what the formula is. Surface area, so in this case, what we're talking about is if we have this region R in the xy plane and we map it up onto z, we're looking for this area right here. So that area on the surface. The area of that surface we can express as a limit, which becomes a double integral of the partial of x, the partial of z with respect to x squared, partial of z with respect to y squared plus 1. So this is the formula that we are going to be using to calculate the surface area. This should be a pretty quick uh, video. We're going to do three examples. So let's take a look at this first example. Find the surface area of the part of the surface z equals x squared plus 2y that lies above the triangular region with vertices 0, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my region, which is here. Okay, so our surface is z equals x squared at 2y. So my partial with respect to x then is 2x. My partial with respect to y then is 2. So my surface area is going to be double integral of the square root of 2x quantity squared, add 2 squared, add 1. And then I have to figure out if I want to integrate with respect to x or y first. So if I integrate with respect to x, I'm going from the line to x equals 1. Left and right bound stays the same, so that should be a pretty easy one. Or I can also go in terms of y. That one's also going to be easy. The lower bound and upper bound are constant. So what we've seen so far is that it doesn't matter in terms of our bounds if we integrate with respect to x or y first. So let's look at our function. If we go to simplify that, that function that we're integrating, we're going to get the square root of 4x squared add 5. If we integrate with respect to x first, we're going to have some difficulty here because we don't have an x on the outside, right? It's hard for us to undo the chain rule here. So integrating with respect to y first might be a better option. Looking at our bounds, we're going from 0 to x because of this line y equals x. And then our x limits are from 0 to 1. So now I'm ready to integrate. So I'm going to end up with 4x squared add 5 times y, and I'm evaluating from y equals 0 to y equals x. So then this gives me the integral from 0 to 1 of x multiplied by the square root of 4x squared plus 5 dx. And now we can see that we can easily integrate this one. So I need an 8x outside for the chain rule, so that's going to give me a 1 eighth. I'm going to end up with this 4x squared plus 5 to the 3 halves, which means I need a 2 thirds to undo that. And I'm going from 0 to 1. And then if you trust me, when I evaluate that, I have 1 12th multiplied by 27 subtract 5 root 5. And so in terms of what that means, if we take this triangular region and we map it up to this surface, and we were almost like to cut out the part that falls on this surface, this would be the area of that portion. Okay, let's take a look at two more examples. Here's the first one. Find the surface area of the portion z equals x squared plus y squared below the plane z equals 9. Okay, so I think in this case it might be helpful for us to draw a picture. So z equals x squared plus y squared. Hopefully we see that that's a paraboloid. Ooh. And it's going to stop at z equals 9. Okay, so then if we set up our surface area, we have our double integral, the square root of 2x quantity squared, add 2y squared, add 1, da. So that's over our region R. So simplifying, this would give us 4x squared, add 4y squared, add 1, da. 
We still have to find out our bounds though. So one thing that you might be thinking when you see this 4x squared plus y squared, that suggests to us that maybe polar might be a good idea. And that's because 4x squared plus 4y squared is 4r squared. So maybe we're thinking polar, but let's figure out what our region is. If we take this upper portion and we reflect it down onto the xy plane, this is our r. So our r is the circle x squared plus y squared equals 9. Because that's a circular region, we're definitively going to want to use polar. Okay, so let's switch this to polar. So this is going to be double integral of 4r squared plus 1. Remember, anytime we switch to polar, we're going to get an extra r. So then the bounds for r here are 0 to 3. Bounds for theta are 0 to 2 pi. I'm not going to go through integrating that with you. We've done some of those. That being said, if you want to continue integrating, I will tell you, you get an answer of pi over 6 multiplied by 37 to the 3 over 2, subtract 1. Okay, we have one last example, and we're doing this last one because it has some tricky uh, integrating in it. So find the surface area of z equals the square root of 4 minus x squared above r, which is the rectangle where x is between 0 and 1 and y is between 0 and 4. Just for fun, we're going to draw a little picture. So on our xy plane, we know x is between 0 and 1 and y is between 0 and 4. So this is the r that we're looking at. This, hopefully, you recognize is a cylinder with a radius of 2. So I'm going to do my best to draw this. You guys know that that's not my uh, specialty. So we have kind of this cylinder here that we're looking at. So what we're doing, then, is we're taking this region R, and we're mapping it up onto the figure. And this is the surface area that we're looking for. Okay, so let's get this one set up then. Our surface area is going to be double integral. Our derivative with respect to x is negative x over the square root of 4 minus x squared. That whole quantity squared. Derivative with respect to y is 0. Add 1. Now, we have rectangular coordinates, so it doesn't really matter the direction that we integrate in or the order that we integrate in, particularly because there's no y even in the problem. So I'm going to integrate with respect to y first just to get rid of it, and then x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this root a little bit. So I end up with x squared over 4 minus x squared. What I'm going to do is find a common denominator with this 1. So that becomes 4 minus x squared over 4 minus x squared. So then if I keep going, I get this to be 0 to 1, 0 to 4. And above, I notice these x squareds are going to um, subtract out. So the square root of 4 ends up being 2. So I have 2 over the square root of 4 minus x squared dy dx. Now when I integrate with respect to y, I'm just going to end up with another 4. So this gives me 0 to 1 of 8 over the square root of 4 minus x squared dx. And this is why we're doing this problem. I'm going to venture to guess some of us are looking at this not quite remembering how to integrate this, which is fine. That's why we're going to go through it now. So you have two different options. Option number one. is you just recognize that this is inverse sine. So if we integrate, you're going to end up with 8 inverse sine of x over 2, which we're evaluating from 0 to 1. So that is 8 times pi over 6, subtract 0, which is 4 pi over 3. Now, some of you may have that remembered, and that's great. 
Many of you, probably like me, don't remember that one. So option number two would be a trig substitution. So we're also going to go through that one. I'm going to let x be 2 sine of theta, which means dx then is 2 cosine of theta d theta. So if I substitute that in, this integral then becomes the integral of 8 over 4 minus 4 sine squared of theta times 2 cosine of theta d theta. So this then, this denominator, that's going to end up being 4 uh, cosine squared theta, and I'm taking the square root of that. So I have 8 over 2 cosine of theta multiplied by 2 cosine of theta d theta. So this then is the integral of just 8 d theta. Now to figure out my limits of integration, I'm going to take the 0 and 1, and I'm going to substitute those in for x. So then my limits end up being 0 and pi over 6. So you notice then we still end up with the answer for pi over 3. Okay, and that is surface area. So if you have any questions, write them down. Please make sure you ask, and I'll see you next time.